Take me back to the past 12 months, national championship game, NFL draft, yeah. selected for the Pro Bowl. You know what, 2010 it was insane. My, my football season started August 2009, and uh, you know, we played you know, our senior class for the Montana Grizzlies, when it went uh, to the national championship. Didn't get it done for the second year in a row, which will always haunt me. But from that moment, I started training. And so, you know, from the end of 09 all through 2010, I mean, this year has been just, a, it's been a blur. It's gone by so fast. It's been jam-packed with football. Haven't quit. Um, and, and, you know, that's why to come home and get some R&R &R and see family and friends. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our hometown hero, Mark Mariani. To be able to relax and kind of look back on the year we had and, and uh, the year, you know, how it went for me and, and all the things that fell into place to, to get me where I'm at. You know, it, it's fun to, to just reflect on it and just, you know, count my blessings and just, you know, be able to, you know, take some time and see how amazing this journey's been. Draft weekend, there was a lot of naysayers. Oh, he's only getting drafted by the Titans, Brandon Fisher, Jeff Fisher's son. Yeah. Looking back on that, what would you tell those people now? Always a lot of naysayers, man. That's how it is, man. I love being that guy. I love being the guy. It's, uh, you know, when I, when I went to Montana, you know, after my senior year going into the draft, when I got that, uh, you know, call and, and got that opportunity with the Titans, you know, that's all I heard. But then it was my job to prove him right. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to say I told you so. I don't want to say any of that. I just want to keep, keep proving right on Sundays. And, uh, you know, hopefully this year and the way, the way things have progressed, hopefully uh, that quiets down a little bit. I've played with you, played against you. Yes, I sir. know you set the bar extremely high. Always. But be honest, this rookie season, was this beyond your wildest dreams of I'll tell you how what, well you would have done? You, you hit it on the head. I dream high. I, I, I have high expectations for myself. Um, I have a high standard for myself. Um, I, I want to be the best that I can be every single day. Um, but to, to be able to have sat here a year ago um, and told you that I would be going to Hawaii and going to the Pro Bowl and uh, you know, franchise record holder, all that th stuff, it was too, it's too big for me. It's been insane. Um, you know, I wanted a shot. I wanted an opportunity. I wanted to, to try to make the team and, and try to contribute a little bit on Sundays. You know, and to be able to have given the, the, the job and the responsibility in the return game and to kind of put us on the map in the return game, you know, it's been incredible. I couldn't have imagined it. That's why you know, I always tell people to just to dream big because you know, I dream big and this exceeded every expectation I could have ever had and that's why I just got to try to soak it up, enjoy every second of it, man. Best memory from the past year? I mean, was it that first touchdown? What, what stands out the most? That is a tough question. That is a really hard question. I mean, there's been so many things. The call from Coach Fisher on draft day, I mean, that is something that uh, I will never forget because that's a dream come true right there. You know, the call from Coach Fisher uh, to go to the Pro Bowl. This will be our last game, but uh, it's, yeah. not, it's not your last game. Congratulations, oh, boy. You are, oh my God, man. It's speechless. I mean, there's nothing, you know, as far as on the field goes, uh, you know, when I broke in the open field against the Broncos uh, for that first kick return and to cross that line. He gets by Prater, and there he goes. You, you always, you know, you always dream of that moment, but when it happened, I was unprepared for it. I mean, I, I'd been, I rolled through that in my head hundreds of thousands of times growing up, but I, I just, I was unprepared. I was, uh, it was crazy, and then, then to do it again against the Redskins a few weeks later. Mariani has a blocker in front of him into Redskin territory, and he'll go all the way and score. No flags are down. Uh, those were special moments for me. I mean, also moments that I will that I will cherish forever are just being with the guys in the locker room. Rookie year, rookie year is special. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, being able to contribute on Sundays, being in a locker room with such great guys, uh, there's nothing but upside in the Titans locker room. I'll tell you that. I think the thing that amazes a lot of people about you is watching Coach Fisher call you about the Pro Bowl, mm -hmm. and you took the time to stop and thank him. This might be a good time to thank you so much for the opportunity, man. Yeah. People know how humble you are. That's something that you're not going to lose, obviously, anytime soon. You know, the thing about it is with Coach Fisher and, and the organization in general is when you're in the spot that I was, kind of, you know, coming from a small school and, uh, you know, not playing with the big boys and, and being, being small, smaller maybe or undersized, all I wanted was a shot, and, and they gave me that. At that point, it was my responsibility and my job then to take that opportunity and run with it. 
And uh, so for them to give me that chance and to, for us to have turned it into what we did, that's why I want to thank them. And, and he's, he's been great. Uh, the, our coaching staff's awesome. And, uh, you, know, I, I, uh, you know, I'm a small-town Montana boy. I'm a more of a football fan than anything else, and, and I will continue to be that. And, you know, I, I, uh, that's, I'm nervous about walking to that locker room in Hawaii because I'm going to try to get every autograph I can right off the bat. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm going to be that guy for sure. You get starstruck. You can't help it. We're from small-town yeah. Montana. What moment in the NFL did you just, your jaw drop, and you're like, I'm sharing the same field as so-and-so? The first time it happened, oh, it happens every week, by the way. The first time it happened was when we played the uh, Saints in the preseason. Drew Brees, uh, the Super Bowl champs, <sighs> nuts. Uh, Chris Johnson, no. Vince Young, first time, you know, it's just like, and now they're just buddies. Now, now, now mm -hmm. you, you go and hang out and, and give each other crap in the locker room every day. And, and for, for, for me, it's hard to explain how that feels because to be living in these shoes, it's just insane to me coming from where I have came from and to be able to, you know, so these guys are superstars. And then the moment that I will, the, the one that was the, the biggest one, I think, was when Randy Moss walked in the locker room the first time. Uh, he, he, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer, one of the best ever. Um, you know, I've been watching him since his career started, uh, mm -hmm. once he beat the Grizz in the national championship in 96, I think. So I've been watching him for a very long time, and, and he's, he's done some crazy things in the NFL. And to see him and to be able to learn from him and that sort of thing, uh, he's just a great, a great guy, a great professional, and, and it was an unreal experience for me to learn from him. You talk about learning in that sense, but there's a lot of the business side of the NFL. You've no seen question. things with Coach Fisher and Vince Young. You've seen no things question. with Randy Moss. What do you learn on that aspect? You know, for me, being a football fan first and, you know, just kind of being, a, you know, a kid playing this unreal game that I'm playing, uh, you know, those are the things that you kind of have to just get used to. You know, one of your great friends, is his locker room's cleared and now he's gone. You know, or somebody gets cut or, or there's contract negotiations or there's a holdout or that's or you, know, you don't know if your coach is coming back or your quarterback. Um, it's the business, man. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, one of those things that is, is never, you know, that's how it's always going to be. Uh, it's entertainment. That's, that's the way it is. But, uh, you know, you just try to not think about those things. You let other people think, you know, take care of that issue you know you control things you control the things that you can control and uh, there's been a lot of drama in in the Titans locker room this this year and you know you just learn from it you learn from it and you just try to be a professional try to put you know your nose to the grindstone and just get through it and uh, you know take care of your business and and you know let let those things fall where they may so many of Grizz fans are now makeshift Tennessee Titans fans yeah talk about the transition there and what you've seen with some of those Grizz fans you know, I've, I've been so lucky and so fortunate to, be, to, to take the steps that I did at Montana and, and to be able to go on some championship runs and, and all that kind of thing. You know, the Grizz Nation is unbeatable. I mean, it, I'll, I'll, always, I'll always, you know, say that I'm so biased, but still, they're just unreal. And now, you know, you get phone calls and texts and emails all day about, about you know, how that we're Titans fans now and all this stuff. You know, I just feel bad for the other 31 teams that lost a bunch of fans because they're all Titans fans now. So, because you know, now now I have to represent for Montana and in in, in, you know for the Titans. So we got to find a way to get more wins for the Montanans now. So that's what I'm working on. It doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing. There's always a moment that sticks out in your mind that you maybe wish you could do over. Mm -hmm. Looking back on your career, is there a game, a play, a series, something that you wish you could have back? Uh, you know, just you know, the second half against Villanova. I mean. We everything else fell into place for us. You know, we got home field advantage our senior year, uh, and uh, you know, into the playoffs. You know, we South Dakota State, and then Stephen F. Austin, and, you know, Appalachian, and if things fell into place, and then, you know, one half of football, uh, will, will, I will never forget. But you know, I have no, I have no, I can't sit here and complain about where I've been. I mean, things have worked out very well for me, and, and like I said. As a, you come, coming in, you know, going on those championship runs, and then being on a six and ten football team, it makes me really appreciate what I've been able to accomplish in high school and in college, and you know, hopefully, it'll push me to to accomplish some of those great things in the NFL. You talked about the national championship losses. Yeah. Good high school buddy Gary Wagner's got a couple of rings. Does he <laughs> flash those in your face at all? Oh, we talk about that quite a bit. I didn't get mine. Uh, it pushes. It's fuel, man. It, it fuels me every day. I will never have a chance to get that again. But you know, he, uh, Gary got got his, and, and uh, I'm so happy for him. I um, I was working hard for mine, but we just didn't get it done. But uh, you know, it, it, it the the moments and the experiences I've shared uh, with uh, 
Grizz Nation and in, at University of Montana will I will hold dear in my heart forever. So you know we came out a little short a couple of times, but we went on some good runs together. So uh, now I'm working for the big ring. Pro Bowl rookie season, one of four rookies headed to Hawaii. What are you expecting? I don't think I, there, the expectations cannot, I, I don't even know because they're, they're going to be exceeded and I know it. I can't put them high enough. Um, but, you know, I'm expecting to be overwhelmed. I'm expecting to be, you know, have a little starstruck moments and stuff like that. But I'm just expecting to have a good time. Um, from everything I've heard, I've, I've tried to get some of the veterans in the locker room that have been there a couple of times and talk to them and, and kind of get a feel for how things are going to be. Um, and it's just going to be a blast. I mean, it's going to be an experience beyond anything in my wildest dreams, you know, to be able to play receiver even uh, with Peyton or Tom or, you know, Philip Rivers or whoever it may be. It's the best of the best. And, and I'm going to be sharing the field with them. You know, I'm going to be looking to, I'm competitive as heck, so I'm going to be looking to contribute and make some plays myself. So we'll see how it goes. How many Montanans do you think are going to make it down there just to have their eyes on you? <laughs> It's a little crazy. We're, we're, we're trying to figure out the logistics as we speak, but, you know, once again, it's just, you know, you count your blessings, and just to have that support, I'm so, I'm so fortunate, so lucky. I just don't think, you know, and I could be wrong, but I don't think every, you know, everyone has that, and for me to have that is special to me. That's why I want to come back and say thank you and share it with everyone, because it isn't worth anything to me if I can't share it, and so... Uh, you know, to have the support of Montanans and have rights and Highliners, I mean, I am just thrilled. We're going to have, a, you know, we're going to have a crew over there, so it shouldn't be a bad time. All-state, all-American, now all-pro, where do you go from here? It's that big ring, man. That's the only motivation I have, man, that big ring. I, w I want it. Uh, you know, I I'll say this a million times. If I wasn't going to Hawaii and going to Dallas to play in the Super Bowl instead, I'd be... I'd be a happy man. I'd be on the, in the clouds. But, uh, you know, it, for me, for me I, I don't lose motivation, I don't think. I, I, every day is, um, is, is something that I get up and, and want to be, you know, want to be the best, want to get better. Um, that's my mentality. That's how I kind of got through my rookie year is pushing myself, wanting to be better, uh, wanting to, to fine-tune the little things um, in my game. Uh, because once you're at this level, you're not faster than anybody, you're not stronger than anybody. You just have to do the little things right. And so, you know, those are big achievements. Uh, my motivation is to win. And so we, uh, we didn't get enough of them this year. But, uh, you know, we'll be back and get to work um, ASAP to figure out a way to do that. Can't let you out of here without putting you on the spot. There's uh -oh. a lot of young lasses out there with your initials drawn in a heart. Would you rather have that wedding ring or that Super Bowl ring? You're, telling, you're asking me right now? Yep. Oh, you, you, there's not even a question. I, I need that Super Bowl ring first or else I can't have that wedding ring. I'm, I'm, that's, that's what I'm saying. So anyone, maybe, hopefully I'm saying this right now, Super Bowl ring, then we'll figure that out. So I'm not available until we win the Super Bowl. That's all there is to it. Ladies, you heard it there. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, buddy.